Good morning, good morning. Is anybody awake? Good morning, it's time to start a Bible study. Where is you? I like to wait. And then everybody comes and s Oh my god. It's a gray morning here in Pennsylvania. Rainy. Miss kind of messed up our art show. Hi, Jim. We had an art festival in town today, and then we were supposed to have this like big bike race, but it looks like it was canceled because I think it's a little dangerous for bikers to be riding in the rain. So I'm just gonna wait a second to see who's gonna join. Jim, you're always such a good um, listener. I really appreciate you. Can't wait all day because I have lots to do. Good morning to the new two who decided. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi, Greg. Thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Ari, thank you. Hi. And I want to tell you, like, I don't know if you guys know, but this um, Facebook Live has something that you can invite people in to, you know, chime in to. So if anybody ever wants to do that and you want to give your testimony of how God is blessing you, I would love to bring you in. Debro, how's it going? Uh, in to give your testimony because I don't want this all to be about how God is blessing me. I would love for them to, the people of the world, to see um, how they're, how he's blessing you. So please don't be shy. But we are going to jump in because I have lots to do today. I got um, furniture pickup and church. So let's begin with a prayer and get right into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the message we are about to learn. Lord, I ask that you hear the prayers of all who are listening and help them in the areas that they need blessings in. Father, I thank you for using me as a vessel for you to share your word and your message. Please, Father, continue to guide my steps and my words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And all the people said, Amen. Hey, Radu. Alrighty. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about blemishes because... This is going to sound really disgusting, but my son has these sets on his face. He's going through um, puberty, so, you know, now it happens that you got all these zits on your face, and, you know, they turn into whiteheads, and they're, like, really disgusting in my book, and that's, like, just something. The zits on the face is just, ugh. it grosses me out. But I have to wonder, like, are our sins the same as blemishes? God sees them. Right? We definitely have them. So it's kind of rude of me to look at, at my own son and be like, Ew, you got those zits on your face. That's disgusting. Because that's not how Jesus looks at us at all. And he could if he wasn't a loving God. Okay? So, one, I need to change my attitude <laughs> towards my son and his pimples um, and maybe help him to not have those blemishes. But I should really worry about myself and the blemishes that I have from my own sin, okay? And just like everybody else, we've all sinned. We all have the blemishes of sin on us. But the good news is, is that when we become new in Christ and we take Christ as our Lord and Savior, then those blemishes are washed away. God does not see them. I don't think Jesus really ever saw them because he loves us so much. And when you just look at someone with love, you don't see that stuff, you know? So let's see what the Bible says about, you know, becoming new when we give ourselves to Christ. So in 2 Corinthians, we're going to read 2 Corinthians 5, 11, the ministry of reconciliation. Since then, we know that this is to fear the Lord when we try to persuade men. What are, what we are in plain, oh, sorry, what we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, <laughs> it is for the sake of God if we are in our right mind. Is it for you? Wait, wait, this is weird. 
If you are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all. Those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we, are regard, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to him in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. That's some serious good news. <coughs> Excuse me. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though Christ were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to Christ. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become righteous, become the righteousness of God. So to reconcile means to kind of make right, you know? Go to God and say, I am sorry for my sins. Confess your sins. You know, I got to admit, I have broken every single commandment, every single one, and I'm not proud of it. And that's why I always thought that Jesus didn't want me because I was too dirty. I was too blemished because I was like, in my mind, I think people commit one, two, maybe three, you know, maybe they, you know, break three commandments, but 10, that's freaking bad, like really bad. So I'm like, how can I ever be chosen to do anything for Christ? Look at me, I'm dirty. But you know what? When I gave my life to Christ and I was born again in the Holy Spirit and baptized in water at the church, you know, you go under the water, you can't, you come out. It's wonderful. I recommend it. It is like insane. I got to tell you, when I was born again, I came out of that water, the world was shining. Everything was shining. And the angels were singing in my head. I'm not even exaggerating. Totally not even exaggerating. That was unreal. Um, but then, of course, it faded because I faded away. I faded away from the church. I faded away from Bible study. I, I faded away from everything. So then I put myself back in the friggin' mud, and I got dirty all over again. But now, God has pulled me out of that pit, and he set me on solid ground, and he holds me off with a power washer. And I am clean again. I am clean. And I am, I am paying so ch close attention to my behavior, my thoughts, and my words. And I'm still failing. Trust me. I think the other day I actually dropped the F-bomb during a Bible study. But I think as long as we're really trying and God sees that we're trying, we're good. Because that is the heart that we need to have. We don't want to be sinners anymore. But we're always going to sin. And that's why we lean on Jesus. That's why we need Jesus. Okay? But take that clean, that clean suit you just got from the dry cleaner and wear it out and let people know who you are, that you are a new creation and you stand for Christ now, okay? Because I still want to party. I still want to go gallivanting through town, being, you know, being Diana, you know? I got a big personality. People know me and I like to party. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to embarrass Jesus. And I'm not going to be a friggin' fake because I've never been a fake before in my life. I'm not going to be a fake to say I work for Jesus and then go doing this, this, and that. Because I know God knows. Because I have the Holy Spirit in me. And if I'm being sexually immoral, then so is he. If I'm being drunk and, and full of, like, you know, curse words and all that crap, I'm putting that on him and I'm not doing it. Okay? So I implore you. Take a clean shower, take a good shower, scrub everything, floss your teeth, clean your ears, dig in that ear canal and get that wax, get everything out. Get everything out of your heart, confess your sins, ask for forgiveness, and you will feel a thousand times better. Start walking in love and understanding, and I guarantee your life's going to change. There's something about the power of the word and the love of Christ that changes everything. 
I'm telling you. It's amazing. So know that today, after you confess your sins and you, you ask Christ to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior, you will feel better. I promise you. Now, I'm not saying life's going to be easy. That is not what I'm saying at all. Because once you do give your life to, to, to Christ, the devil's going to be on your butt. Because that's what he does. Because he doesn't want you to be a soldier for Christ, okay? And he is clever. And he will use your friends. And he will use your lover. And he will use your spouse and your children to set you off, to make you filled with anger or temptation. So you got to be on guard. Guard your mind and your heart. Everything starts in your mind, okay? Guard those thoughts. Yeah, I think I want to drink. Yeah, I think I want to call that person. Yeah, I think I want to talk crap about that girl. You know what I mean? Guard your good deposits. That was lesson number two from when we started this whole thing. And you know what? It's hard, but it's totally worth it. Nothing worth doing is easy, okay? So that's it for me. I had to keep it short today because I told you I'm going to pick up some new couches, gorgeous couches for like $35. What a super blessing because this thing is easily 250 bucks. Again, proof that God blesses. He loves to He loves to bless and he's blessing me with this awesome piece of furniture because it's the best color on the planet. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today. Please continue to watch. Like I said, I'm going to be coming out with a lot longer videos. They're not going to be live, but it's more in-depth Bible studying. Again, I am not a Bible scholar. I'm learning day by day, learning with you, hoping that you're getting something too from the word of God. I love you all. Thank you so much for all the support, encouragement, and just love that I have been receiving. I super appreciate it and I thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Make today a great day. And remember, Jesus loves you and I love you. And if you need prayer, PM me. If you just, if you don't, you just want to chit chat, you know, I'd love to chit chat, but don't call me, all right? Okay, let's end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all who are watching. Please bless them. Please continue to guide us in the way that we should go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Have a great day. Remember, love yourself, love each other, love Jesus, and throw a little sugar to me.